So similar and so very, very different. Let's take a look at the 10 biggest shocks moving from the Canon R5 to the R5C. Okay, so like a lot of you, I've recently gotten my hands on the brand new release Canon R5C. And I'm moving to this camera body from the Canon R5. And I've had it for a few days, had it some, some time to play with it and kind of start to generate some ideas and feelings about it. And this is a very, very interesting camera. And really the thing I wanna start off right off is this is so similar to the Canon R5 and it is a completely, totally different camera in so many ways. So now we might as well go ahead and start off with the number one thing that I think most of you are interested of, and that is this. Shock number one, there is absolutely no overheating or record limits on this camera in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> it is so nice to have a body that has this kind of quality and just beautiful imagery that you're not sweating about overheating and cutting it off and having to make all these different hacks. You can literally just cut this thing on and run. It's also really nice to know if you're doing videos and interviews, you're not having to go there and click off when you get to that 30 minute section, you know it's going to record. So that right there, peace of mind, super nice. Shock number one, definitely that. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next really shocking thing about this system, if you are coming from a Canon R5, and that is the different OS that they have for the different menu systems. Most of you know at this point that there is a different menu system for photos versus videos. And what's great about this is it just adopts the Canon Cine menu system inside the camera, which in a lot of ways is really, really awesome. If you're someone that's used any of the Canon cinema systems before, like the C300, the C70, the C500, you'll instantly feel at home in this menu system. It is much, much more robust, much, much more better tailored and suitor for video work. Now, that being said, why Canon has crammed a Cine OS into this system, one thing I'm noticing as I'm going through is that it doesn't seem to really take into account the body of the R5 versus a C300 or C70. They're different bodies, they have different tools. The menu system is something you're gonna to have to get used to, but I think once you do, you'll understand that it unlocks a huge amount of potential inside this camera. Now, the next thing that I've discovered on this camera that has really gotten me shocked and and it's been really, really awesome, is having XF AVC codec in this camera. I was excited about that because I've used that on my other uh, C300s and things like that, but man, I cannot tell you how incredible it is to go out there and shoot in an R5 capacity, bring these things in Premiere, and have a codec that doesn't destroy Premiere. It is much, much easier to work in. Uh, don't have to spend all my time making proxies, and just having access to that codec in here, I love it. XFAVC is a great codec to record in. I'm really, really excited it's here. I think if you've never used it before, you're coming from R5, you're gonna really, really dig it. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the autofocus system. Yes, this autofocus system, if you are coming from an R5 or an R6, is very, very different. And what's really strange about this is because it is an R5, in the photo mode, the autofocus system works exactly the same. But when you switch over into the autofocus mode in the video mode, because now it is operating on the Canon Cine OS system, it is definitely different. It definitely operates and works different. Now, the one thing that really shocked me was there's no touch and drag in video mode. This is actually something that I did use all the time on the Canon R5. Really disappointed that they don't have as intuitive a touch or drag system in the Canon R5C as they do in the Canon R5. Now, all that being said, the autofocus from what I've been able to test still works really, really great. I mean, it's pretty comparable to the R5. I haven't really noticed anything dramatically different in that, but not having that touch and drag system is a big, big difference. Okay, on to the next most shocking thing, and this is actually probably one of my <laughs> absolute favorite parts of this camera. Thanks to the cinema operating system, we have SNF mode, slow and fast, variable frame rate, whatever you want to call it. But finally, 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 we can utilize all of the frame rate options you would expect on a camera coming in at this level. You can literally set your frame rates on anything from one up to 120 frames a second in 4K. This is awesome. This gives you so much creative potential inside this camera completely unlocks what you can and can't do on a video camera today. And I'm so happy to have that. The other thing that's really great about this, not only does this give you the variable frame rate that essentially the SNF will actually 
translate your, if you film at 48 frames a second, but you want to play it back at 23 or 24 frames a second, it'll do that for you on camera. But what's great is when you're doing it, you can also have a second option where you can record audio. So if you're not, if you're doing B-roll, you don't worry about audio, you can record a no audio, but if you want to have that audio to recover later, you can record the audio in those frame rates. So the slow and fast mode on this camera is amazing. I plan to do a lot of videos talking about this, but that is something that, man, it was shocking how good it works. You can hit a fast button for it, get to it really quick. It's awesome, so beautiful, it looks great. I'm really, really pumped by that. Now, when we're talking about shocking things, let's go in and talk about the battery, because it definitely comes up. And yes, there is no doubt, the battery on this thing drains super quick compared to the Canon R5. If you're coming from a Canon R5, you are going to be shocked at how fast this battery drains. Now, that being said, it's kind of a quirky little thing because I really think the biggest problem with this battery is actually the operating system in the cinema part of this camera and not the camera itself. So for instance, when you switch the sucker out of cine mode, you may be out of battery, you'll still have 50% of your battery accessible to you if you are in the photo mode. It actually has more to do with the cine mode, than the cine operating system than it does with the battery, but it is something that if you are coming from a Canon R5, you need to be prepared of because it is a bit shocking at the difference in battery performance. Now, speaking of battery, this is going to be a shock and it's a great shock, let me tell you. 4K HQ all the time. You get a beautiful 8K downsampled 4K image on here every time. The images are great. It looks absolutely fantastic. And that applies in 4K 60 frames per second too. So the image from this camera, if you're talking about video, is absolutely stunning. And once again, it'll never overheat on you. Now, another thing I really love about this that I found simple, but hey, it was shocking for me because it runs into it all the time. That is this. Because of the extended body here, I can now flip out my screen and rotate it down like this even if I have HDMI protectors on my camera, which let's be honest, if I'm using this camera with this tiny little micro HDMI, I'm going to have an HDMI protector and being able to have this where I can look down and twist that fully is fantastic. I always was bumping against these in my Canon R5. And another aspect of this camera that is terrific that I'm so happy we can finally access is now we can set shutter angle in the camera. This is so much preferred versus shutter speed when you're working on this camera. And where that's really helpful is like what I said in an earlier point is on that slow and fast mate. What's great is if you're switching between different frame rates, you don't have to worry about screwing up your shutter angle because if, you're, if you want 180 degree shutter, it's gonna adjust on the fly for you, which means you're not gonna get weird motion blur and stuff like that. And you have the freedom to go fast quickly and not think about it. And honestly, when you really get down to it, if you're doing most cinema and commercial stuff, you wanna be thinking in shutter angles, not shutter speed. Now, while we did get great access to the shutter angle, we lost something really, really weird in the camera. And that is your aperture wheel control. For some inexplicable reason for me, I, I cannot begin to understand this, the Canon R5C does not let you use your aperture dial or the set button in the middle of it when you are in video mode. This was absolutely 100% baffling and shocking to me as a long-term DSLR type user for video. I, just by muscle memory, I'm always using my aperture wheel because I do, I'm a photographer too, and not having access to that in video mode, I honestly can't see any rational reason to it. It just feels like, once again, it's an example of an OS, Cine OS operating system being thrown in there that's not taking an account for the body. But if you're picking up a Canon R5C, I was shocked by it. Pretty sure you're gonna be shocked by that too. And really just one more bonus shock that I actually found uh, really strange about this. Uh, it's an incredible camera. I've been really excited for the most part, but it is the Wi-Fi on this camera. This camera, if you're someone that uses Wi-Fi on your camera, you're going to be very, very baffled by this. It actually makes no sense to me, and that is this. If you are in photo mode, you have Wi-Fi built in this camera. You can control it with the Canon Connect app. But if you switch on the exact same camera and the exact same body into video mode, you no longer have internal wireless transmission on your camera. You need to get a WRFT ARG10 wireless file transmitter, which is an add-on to access your camera wirelessly. 
This is absolutely ridiculous. I have no idea why that is a thing. When you have an absolute built-in Wi-Fi uh, thing already in a body, you can't access it in video mode without an additional add-on. Um, but that was very, very shocking to me. I don't understand what is going on there, but if you're someone that likes to use Wi-Fi on your camera in video mode, I know I sometimes use it, I'll hand it to a camera assistant and we'll sometimes punch focus on there to get different focus on gimbal shots. Just can't do that anymore on the R5C and it's kind of weird. But anyway, guys, that's what I have to say. For the most part, I wanna be positive. This is a really great camera. I really, really do love it, but hey, if you're coming from the Canon R5, you are going to experience some differences. I just want to let you know what they are. Anyway, guys, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Please leave me any comments down below. Yeah, go out there, keep on shooting, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon.